Uh, welcome again today, my friends. It's really, really great to be with you. And uh, man, this world's gone crazy. Uh, won't be long. We'll be putting up a big, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, get, getting in with uh, Donald Trump and uh, building a big wall between Queensland and New South Wales and all the other states. And uh, we'll just be here, little Queenslanders, having fun. But oh man, it's just a silly time that we're going through. But you know, I think in heaven, God's just laughing and he's got a plan for us and that's what we've got to find, the plan of God. And we've just got to keep focused on him and allow his presence to get around our lives. It's a great time to be able to just uh, just wait on him and, 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 and let the reality of Christ just uh, fill your being. And, and I, I'm really, really very, very excited about, uh, about the days that we're living in and uh, the, what God can do in this time. I want to speak this morning about spirit life, spirit life, and that's what it's all about today. And uh, in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And so, you know, and it also says in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, that he has uh, made us sufficient as ministers. Every believer is a minister, minister of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So, Father, I'm asking you today in Jesus' name that you will help us to, to glean from your word, Father. Lord, we are spirit beings. Though we live in this natural body, there's an outward man, but it's perishing. But there's an inward man, the spirit man, that's being renewed day by day. And, Lord, this spirit man connects with you. The natural man cannot connect with you because it's an enmity with you. But Lord, the spirit man wants to connect with you and you want to connect with our spirit man. So Father, I'm asking you today, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. In this, this amazing time when everything's upside down and people don't know whether they're coming or going. But my God, I thank you, you know. You know exactly and Lord, we don't want to just listen to natural talk. We want to hear spirit talk. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen and amen. So we're going to talk about spirit life. See, I believe today that there is a fresh wind of change beginning to blow across believers' lives. And if you're sensing in, in this time a stirring and a and a challenging, and, a, and even an awakening, or, or an expectancy, or something like that, that is the wind of the Spirit that's blowing over your life. It's not just to put goosebumps on you, it's not just to make you feel good, but it's to stir something on the inside of you that will cause you to rise up in this hour that we're living in, and be the church, the called out ones, the people that God is going to use in this day. I believe that this uh, fresh wind is creating a hunger. It's creating a hunger for truth and reality. Not religion, not just, you know, being going to a church or something like that, but finding the truth. You see, it's only the truth that will make you free. Now, empty words will not cut it. Empty traditions will not, not do it for us. Empty doctrines will not help us. Empty rules and regulations will just bind us and bring us into a place of confusion. These things have never ever met the needs of a spirit person, the spirit believer, the spirit that's inside you. It, these things will, won't meet the needs that, uh, that you know you have as a spirit person. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 7, I want to read these scriptures to you. But it says... But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. That word perilous means uh, times of stress, times of uncertainty, times when people will, will not know what, what's really happening. We've got to be able to understand the Spirit of God that is moving today. It says, know this, uh, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, dishonest, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, uh, unholy, 
unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, are brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying its power, and such turn away. We're living in a time when a lot of the church is denying the power of God, denying what God has done for us. For of this sort there are those who creep into households and make captive of gullible women, loading down, loaded down with sins, led away by virtuous lust, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. There's a, there's a way that's going and, and people are looking for something, but they never come to the knowledge. They have a form of godliness, but they deny its power always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The church has been lulled into a sense of satisfaction, self-satisfaction, self-gratitude. Everything's okay. You know, we're, we're, just, we're doing fine. You know, we're doing this, we're doing that. But friend, I want to tell you, the Bible talks about a great shaking. And I believe that uh, the church has been shaken at this moment that we're living in. Lulled into the sense of satisfaction, yet trying to fill the void in their life. You see, God has put a void in every person's life that can only be filled by truth and reality. False will not help us. False religion, whatever it might be, will not help us. But I believe that God is doing something amazing in the church. There's a fresh wind that's beginning to blow. There's a fresh stirring that's beginning to go, grow. There's a hunger that's starting to, to start inside human. And, and, and we're seeking after truth. We're seeking, seeking after reality. That void that, that only God can fill. The void of reality. You know, mankind will try to fill it with power. They'll try to fill it with, with finances. They'll try to fill it with whatever they can, but they will never, ever be satisfied. I want you to have a look with me in 2 Peter, uh, also uh, chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power, God... His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. God has given us precious, precious promises. He has given us everything that we need. But he, then he goes on and he says, uh, he says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness. I think that you'll find that they're very, very opposite to the things that Timothy was speaking about. Lovers of men. Now God wants us to be lovers of others. God wants us to pour out our life. Godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be ever more diligent to make your call and your election sure. Friend, you've got, you've got to know that, that you've got a call in your life. And it's so very, very easy as, as Christians to get caught up in the rat race, to get caught up in, in life and, and, and the Joneses and everything else that's going on, and we forget that God has called us to be able ministers of this gospel. God has called us to, to, to speak and, and be ministers of this new covenant. This born again, being filled with the Spirit, uh, the Lord has made us, uh, made available to us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. We must do life God's way. You can't do it in the flesh way. You see, there's a war that goes on in every believer. 
There's a war that goes on in every believer's life. There's a war for the, you know, to satisfy the flesh, and then there's a war that, to satisfy the things of the Spirit. I wonder today which way we're heading, if we're allowing God to do it. We must do life God's way. Love, mercy, forgiveness, honor, giving, believing, kindness, self-control. God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are higher than our ways. In Proverbs uh, 14 verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. There's a way that can seem right to you right now, but, but what's it bringing? Is it bringing spirit life? Is it bringing fulfillment? Is it bringing satisfaction? Or, or, you know, after like having a, a steak and, you know, you, you feel full, but, you know, within a, you think I'll never need another feed again, but within a few hours you're hungry again. You see, the things of this world will not satisfy, won't fill us. But I want to say that I believe that God wants to take us to a higher level and, 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 and reveal his ways to us, the ways of the Spirit. You see, when you take the power and truth out of the gospel, all you end up is, a, is with a religious spirit. A religious spirit that, that is rampant in the church. Religious words. We, we say words with, that, that are religious words, but they don't have the meaning. They don't have the passion in it. God bless your brother, you know. Or different words like that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They're, they're just cliches. I think I've told you many times uh, Nancy taught our budgerigar to say all those words. Didn't help the budgerigar one little bit when the cat ate him. See, those words really won't help you when, when problems come your way. But I want to tell you, spirit life will. Spirit life can come into your life and change you forever. You take it, all you've got is religious. I remember speaking to a man at, at a church one time and, and, and I, you know, I got caught up in the rat race too of, of these words that mean very, very little, but you just say them because that's what, that's the language of the church world. And I went up to this gentleman one day and I shook his hand. I said, God bless you, brother. And he said, he does, he does, he does. And, you know, his response was just as religious and just as empty and just as stupid as my comment. Friend, I, I want to see God bless people. I want to, but friend, you see, you are the architect of your future. You, you are the one that, that can open the door of your life. My God bless you will really not help you. That might be my heart. But I want to tell you, unless you open up your heart and let the King of glory come in, you could just be as empty as, as empty as empty. And I thank God today that he's revealing that emptiness to us because there's a hunger that's starting to develop inside us. You see, a religious spirit will never ever need, meet the needs of a spirit man. Every, every believer needs to have an encounter with the Word of God and the God of the Word. You need to have an encounter with the Word of God and with the God of the Word. It's every believer's birthright to walk in the supernatural power of God. It's your birthright. It's what God has given you. See, you can meet a Christian and, and there's no life in them. There's, there's just no life in them. The fire's gone out. It's fire's just empty words. And after you've been speaking to them for a little while, your negativity starts spewing out of their life. Oh, this happened to me, and that happened to me, and, and we go on and on and on, and it spews out of your mouth. And after a little while, you, you, you feel the, the, the heaviness come upon yourself, and, and if you allow it, you'll start to meditate then on the things that have gone wrong in your life. I thank God, thank God, be under God who always causes us to triumph. Amen? That's what I believe anyhow. Then you can, then you can meet a, another Christian and, and they're oozing with, with the life of the Spirit. 
something inside them and, and you start to talk to them and oh man, they, they just come alive and, 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 and it's good to be with them and they start to talk about the miracles and they start to talk about the power of God and they start to talk about how good God is and man, you're just getting pumped up and you're just getting excited. You feel refreshed. You feel life coming into you. You see, life produces life. Death will always produce death. Start to speak about the miracles. If you're not experiencing God's presence today, guess who's moved? Guess, see, we drift away sometimes. God's calling us back. There's a fresh wind of the Spirit, a work of the Spirit, this beginning to flow over the believer's life again, causing something to rise up inside us. The New Testament church was endured with power from on high. Oh, man, I like that. I like that. There were healings and there was deliverances. Souls were being added to the church daily as they met together in houses. And as they met together in houses, they'd be talking about the good things of God. And as, as people talked about the good things, the unbelievers would say, I want that. I, I want to experience that. I, I want to have that in my life. People were added to the church daily. I would just say a few keys to flowing in the supernatural power of God. Let me say it again. It is your birthright to flow in the supernatural power of God. It is not just for some select few who go to some unique or elite Bible school or whatever it might be that, that get degrees and, and the t diplomas and goodness knows what else. And, and so now they've got a doctor or they've got a this in front of them. And there's nothing wrong with those sort of things, but I'm not relying on that. It's got to be something more real than that. It's your birthright. Whether you feel like it or not, it is your birthright to move in the supernatural power of God. In the New Testament, they were endured with power from on high. I want to tell you, friends, that same Holy Ghost power is flowing today. That stirring that is inside you is a stirring of the Holy Spirit. I pray today that as I speak, my words would become life and that they would stir you and cause you to rise up and take the devil by the throat and slap him up the side of the head and tell him to get out of your life, that you, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus and it is your birthright. God has given you everything that pertains to life and to godliness. I'm just going to speak about a few things. To break the cycle. To break a cycle that we find ourselves involved in. Number one, lift your expectation. If all you see is gloom and doom and all you talk about is gloom and doom, well, gloom and doom is what you'll get. But if somehow or other you can lift your expectation and start to speak words, and sometimes you've got to say many, many things over and over in your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. I have spirit life flowing through me. The life of the spirit, because you see, it's not the life of the natural. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I had an encounter with an almighty God. I was filled with the anointing and the power of God, and it flows through us. It's in me. And I want to stir up the gift. I want to stir up what's inside me. Breaking the cycle. Lift your expectation. Start to speak differently. Start to say those things. I am a new creation. I am a brand new man. Yes, I was lost. Yes, I was tossed by every wind of doctrine. Yes, I was a mess. Yes, yes. But praise God, I got born again. The old man was buried with Christ, but I, I was raised again in newness of life. 
with the mighty power of God that can surge through me. I've got to speak differently. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All oh, things have passed away. They're dead. God's put them in a sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't even remember it. All he sees is this new creation man. Hallelujah. Born to win. Born to, to achieve. Born to be victorious. Born to rule and reign. That's who I am. So I've got to have an expectation. I've got to speak differently. And there's a phrase that I like to use. Only believe. Only believe all things are possible. All across the world, people are crying out for the reality of a living God. They don't want religion, friend. They don't want our religion. They don't want that. They want reality of a living God, a God who is true to his word, a God of power, a God of power. Romans uh, chapter 8. Why don't we just have a quick look at Romans chapter 8. I'm just going to read from verse 11. It says, But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are... So, sorry, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, that you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And of children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed you have suffered with him, that you may also be glorified together. Friend, this is a work of the Spirit. See, the work of the flesh says, Neil, you're, you're a loser. Neil, you're, you've done wrong things. But now, you see, the Spirit of God wants to bear witness with me that I'm a new cre creation. I'm, I'm born again. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in me. And it wants to quicken me. The wind of the Spirit that's blowing, that's coming, that's touching us, it, it's activating, it's motivating, it's, it's raising something up on the inside of me that will cause the church, the sleeping giant, to begin to rise, to go out in victory and triumph over the devil because the devil is a loser. We can cry out, Abba, Father. What an amazing thing. That the God who created the heavens and the earth, the almighty, the all-powerful, all sufficient, everything about God, that that God, I can lift up my voice and say, Father, Father, Father God, you are my Father, hallelujah. I am your Son. I can cry, Abba, Father, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We are, ch we are God's children. When I said you've got to change the way you speak, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm going to start speaking differently and believing differently. I'm a joint heir with Christ. Speak differently about yourself. It's not too late. It's never too late. Jesus said in John 14, 12, If you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also. You will do also. The works that I do, you shall do also. Friend, I pray the wind of the Spirit will get hold of us. I want you to have a quick look with me in the book of Ephesians. I told you many times this is my favorite book. Well, they're all favorites. <laughs> they're all great. they are all, all got a message. They've all got truth in them. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's amazing. It says here, that uh, Paul speaking again, it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 
And what is the exceeding, exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sat him at his own right hand. Father, guys, I want to tell you this, that Heavenly Father is watching over us. The Spirit is hovering over your life. He wants you to understand your inheritance. He wants you to understand what God has made available to you. You know, I've got the same power that Jesus had. You might say, oh, that's too... No, no, I'm saying you've got to start speaking differently. If you underestimate what God's done for you, well, that's how you live in according to what you believe. But if the Word of God says that I'm a joint heir with Jesus, if the Bible says that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me, it's going to quicken my mortal body. Well, I'm not going to come into agreement with negative people. I want to come into agreement with what the Word of God says. And that the Word of God says that I have the same power that Jesus had. That's what I have. We have the same authority. Thank God for the wind that is touching us afresh. Can you feel it? Can, can you sense it? Can, 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 can you somehow to reach out and, and allow it to just blow over you today? Friend, because it's, it's, it's not enough just to listen to messages, empty messages or whatever. But friend, unless it touches our life, unless we somehow or other start to activate and, and change the way we think, nothing will change. Can you feel it? Thank for, thanks for this hunger. Do you, do you have a hunger that's stirring on the inside of you? Is there something that's beginning to rise up? Hunger for truth. As we explore and search the unfathomable riches of this book. All the things that God has. The things that perhaps some people have said you can't have. God says you can have. The Bible says in, in uh, Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, seek, and knock. I just don't want to have a form of godliness. I put a back the front collar on or something like that. or Do something that people would see because of what I'm wearing. I want people to see because of what I'm carrying. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I don't want to live in ignorance. Only seekers of truth will find the answers and have an encounter with the living God. You see, if you're not seeking, if you're not asking, if you're not knocking, you'll never find. You'll, you'll never find. You'll never, you'll never experience the truth. You'll never... Find the answers. You never have that encounter with God. You never find the reality. But I thank God today that there is a reality that my Savior is real. I've got to change the way I speak. I've got to change the way I talk. I've got to talk the way God wants me to talk. I've got to, I've got to speak truth. I, 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 I don't know, but there's something that's stirring. I am so excited about it. You can meet some Christians there, and, and I've met some Christians recently, and I, I've been sharing with them, and, and they've been sharing with me, and man, I, I, you can just feel the anointing. You can feel the presence of God, and, and there's a stirring. Get with believers. Find somewhere where you can find believers. No, don't get with the doubters. I, get with believers and, and, and allow that life of the Spirit Spirit life come into us. I wonder today if, you know, you're, you might have been saved for a long time. I've been saved for over 50 years now. I am more excited today than I've ever been. I, I am more passionate than I've ever been. There, there is an open heaven over us. There is a stirring over us. There, the, the prophetic utterances are coming through with power and with authority. We see the enemy trying to do whatever he can to stop the move of God, close down the churches. And we're most probably meet, meeting with more people today through this media than we have at running church services on Sunday. We're, 
that's not just us, but that's every church. Friend, there is only one church that's meeting in Australia. There's one church. It's God's church. And I belong to that church. Amen. I pray for a move of the Spirit of God in every church, every Bible-believing group of people, that somehow or other we would rise up. We've had visions before, many years ago, of little fires starting all around Australia, lighting up Australia, and all of a sudden these fires started to come together. I'm not just believing for, say, if I'll say it like this, so you might be able to understand me, that just on the Sunshine Coast we're going to have a move of the Spirit. I'm believing for all of Australia to have a move of the Spirit. I'm believing for not only all of Australia, I'm believing for all of the world because my God says as truly as I live, all the earth is filled with my glory. God doesn't have a vision just for Sunshine Coast or Kiwana. He's got a vision for the world. God so loved that world that he gave his only begotten son. He loves people. He gave his life for people people. He gave his life for you. And if you've gone cold, if the fire's gone out, man, <laughs> oh Jesus, help us. Help us, help us, help us. Help us, Father. Father, I'm praying for people today. I'm praying for ministers and, and, and anybody that, that's listening today, that God, you would just stir them again. Deep calls to the deep. God, would you cause a stirring in the deep in their hearts today? Would you touch them today? Cause them to rise up out of, the, out of the ashes, out of the gloom, out of the doom, out of the negativity, failure, defeat, whatever it is, and acknowledge whatever has attacked them as a lie from the pit of hell and get a hold of the Word of God, get a hold of what God says. God has given you everything that pertains to life and to godliness. He's given you everything that you need to overcome and triumph over the devil. He's given you his blood. He's given you his word. He's given you his anointing. He's given you his power. He's given you the Holy Spirit. He's given you everything. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, come. Touch people today. Raise up pastors. I want to pray for people. And pastors, well, every one of us are ministers of the gospel. But there's some people there that you've had a call of God to go out and lead. I want to pray for you today that God would stir you again. You might be in a church today, but I pray that you would have such an encounter with God, that you would have such an impact on your life, that next week or whenever it is you stand in your pulpit again or whenever you talk, that they'll see a different person. They'll see the power of God oozing out of your life. They'll see the anointing. They'll see the reality. Because you see, people want reality. They don't want religion. They don't want that. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for these people. I'm looking them eyeball to eyeball right now. I'm looking right into their eyes right now. And I'm praying, Father, that you will by your Spirit come in a mighty deluge of your power. My God, even knock them off their chair or whatever it might be. Touch them by your Spirit. Lord, let something rise up within them. Let a shandara mandi karashaka bunde. Let the Spirit of God be loosed inside them and we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor. If you're listening to me today and, and uh, you might never have heard anything like this before, your need for salvation, your need to give your life to Christ, would you give your life to Christ? Would you ask Him to come into your life? Would you let Him come in today? Would you acknowledge Him as your Lord and Savior? He is your friend. Jesus, would you come in? All you've got to do is say, Jesus. You can say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you touch me? Would you, would you reveal yourself to me? My mind scramble. I've got so many thoughts. I've got so many things going on in my brain. But Lord, there's something this morning that's triggered, something that's touched me. And I want to inquire. I, I, want, to, I, I want to start to open up to you, God, that you might come and touch me. Would you come into my life today? Give him all the praise for that if you do. Today, if you need a healing in your life, Jesus is your healer. He is your healer. Hallelujah. You can lay hands on that part of your body, wherever it might be, that needs that touch. And you can just reach out to him today and say, Jesus, would you touch me? Would you heal my body? Would you set me free from pain? I, I, want, to, I want to serve you, Lord. I want to be raised up in this day that we're living in. And we'll give you all the praise, give you all the glory. Friends, today I, I really pray that 
that we would be so conscious, so conscious of, of God moving by His Spirit. God's not dead, He's alive. God's not asleep somewhere. He's very, very much alive. He's got His hands on the pulse. He's got His hands on this, this whole earth. He's got a plan for humanity. And I pray today that that plan that God has for your life will be fulfilled and will give you all the praise, give you all the glory. I don't know where uh, right now if I can just uh, say with uh, Greg and Joanne, I don't know where, how long it's going to be before we can uh, get them back. Um, borders are still closed and things like that. Sydney might, uh, New South Wales might open up to foreigners before. So I don't know, we might all have to go down to Sydney. <laughs> But anyhow, all I know is uh, Greg and Joanne, we love you guys very, very much. And we're praying for God's provision, God's way, God's plan, and uh, that we can get you back here as quick as possible so that you can be part of the life of this church. We love the mantle that's on your life. I love the, the, the anointing that you carry, the, the prophetic word that you bring, the life of the spirit that's in you. And uh, just want to say how much we really, really love you and care for you. So be blessed and uh, look after yourself. Church, people, people, believers, you just get so excited about God. Get ex Run around the building, jump in the air, do whatever you want to do, but just get excited about Jesus. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And uh, I just want to tell you, on, for Nancy and I too, we just love you guys so much. Be blessed. Have a great, great week. Amen and amen.